So the other day I mentioned that, uh, you know, we have the mean rooster who's always chasing us. And normally uh, we use the hose to keep him at bay. He doesn't like the hose. Um, so, because we sprayed him with it a couple of times early on when he started to rush us. And since then, now he won't even come near us when we've got the hose. We just spray a little bit on the ground. He just turns around and walks the other direction. But today, I kind of feel like I need to face my fears and confront Merle without the hose. Because once winter comes, we can't be dragging the hose out here in the freezing weather. And I want to be able to come in here and do what I need to do without him coming after me. So, not sure how this is going to go. Let's see. All right, chickens, Merle, you be a good boy. Really? Is that it? Yeah, that plane's low. Heading into Baltimore, I think. Based off of the direction. Actually, I don't know. He's headed more north. He's awful low. So, that was um, very uh, non-dramatic. You know, here I was all worried that as soon as I opened that door, he was going to come after me. And he just walked on by with the rest of the girls, could care less. So, I was even prepared with my new... He's crowing about it now, though. I was all prepared with my, uh, my rubber boots. Um, I'll tell you what, one thing about homesteading, and this may sound kind of dumb for probably a lot of you that have homesteads and... and and deal with animals and and gardening and mud <laughs> or whatever it is you know all the time um, but a good pair of rubber boots is definitely a necessity or a tool that you will want to invest in that's very cheap uh, you know I mean I think I got my rubber boots here for uh, like I don't know 20 bucks at tractor supply uh, but, you know, there's definitely more expensive versions out there, you know, up to ones that are over a hundred, uh, or in that range, if you're getting like steel toe, uh, but like, I, I just got these like two or three weeks ago up until now, uh, I've just been running around here in my sneakers and then, you know, they get all muddy or, you know, when you're in the, the chicken coop and stuff, you could deal with chicken poop and getting that on the bottom of your shoes and kind of sucks for sneakers but I am so happy I bought these boots I also feel safer with these boots on uh, when I'm around Merrill in case he did come charging at me at least I've got some protection up the side of my leg with the, the rubber boot from his spurs um, so get yourself some rubber boots if you don't have any uh, because they come in handy for all kinds of different reasons so these flowers here that I'm sitting in front of they um, they had like these crazy ferny leaves on them and um, did nothing all summer long except for they just look like ferns. They were part of my wild seed mix. And now all of a sudden, uh, even though they've all fallen over and have all these purple, um, they got these weird purple stems, but they're super, like if you stand them up, you know, I mean, they're, they're really tall. But when they were first part of the wild seed mix, you know, I had other little flowers come up, mostly sunflowers throughout the summer. And I was like, what, did they just throw in all these filler seeds? Like, what is this stuff? Because I, I didn't really look at the mix of what was included in, in the flowers. Um, and I actually need to still go back and look at my order to see what this type or this variety of flower is. But man, uh, about a... I don't know, three or four weeks ago, they started 
blossoming and they've got all kinds of like little blossoms on them and they're all different colors there's white and like this what is this like magenta color there's like these like kind of muted pinks um and they're all through here and there's tons more like buds on that i know they're they're going to be blossoming over the next couple weeks uh next year i plan on planting this again but uh giving them more support so they're not all falling over because i would prefer it if they were kind of standing up like along the edge of this fence here but you know sometimes you get little surprises especially if you're not reading the um ingredients as it were on the bag or, or what type of varieties that you're you're growing so i'm i'm pretty happy with these uh these flowers after all and um they make a nice little little side border especially you know this time of year with it being mid-october uh even though the zinnias are still blooming uh pretty heavily uh you know a lot of other stuff like the sunflowers are all gone and and other types of flowers have died out by now like even my mums have have started to look kind of ugly and dead there in front of the chicken run um, but man these things are they're just getting started and i don't think that we will probably based off of the extended forecast i don't think we're going to have any frost for the next at least week and a half two weeks after that it could be sketchy but uh having you know this addition to the garden is, is nice this time of year plus with all these blossoms and, and, and flowers blooming you know it's still for any pollinators that are still out and are, are trying to build up their energy and stores for winter here's another another option they have in our backyard so we're we're helping feed the little guys so and the chickens leave them alone for the most part they'll come up and peck on the side of, of a branch here and there but they they've uh, left them alone when they've been out here in the garden after having quite the dry spell for a couple of weeks uh, we now for the last day and a half have had a decent amount of rain probably about an inch of rain since Sunday night and it has really caused some stuff in the garden like my garlic here the sprouts even more have come up and um, are getting taller and stronger looking so that's great that's going to give them a lot more energy for this uh, coming winter so there's still a few that don't look like they've come up through the straw yet but really the majority of them have the other thing too with the rain just in the last couple of days is that uh, my broccoli and cabbage that are in here have really popped up and are pushing up against the um, bottom of the tool this tool is kind of dry rotted now and it's starting to rip um, and it's sunken in a little bit from the rain but uh, you know I've got these plants that are pushing up here and once I get the plastic tunnel over this um, I'm hoping they've got a good start now because they are really doing well and I may have planted them all a little too close together you know they were so tiny when I put them in here I wasn't even sure if they were going to make it once I did the transplant but every single one of them has taken off so again this was an experiment though so we'll see what what happens over the winter with saving these things see another great thing too about this fall is even though it's been dry and, and whatnot for the most part uh, just the fact that it stayed pretty warm uh, we've had a lot of days in the 70s um, and i mean the coldest it's been at night has been in the mid 40s so the pepper plants haven't cared for the the mid 40s weather and now I, i'm seeing that some of these uh, leaves over here uh, are starting to die off on this poblano plant but i mean there's still blossoms coming in and the thing is with your peppers uh, I generally plant them from seed every year. I start them inside, you know, sometime in March, and then I transplant them out in May. Um, but really, with peppers, if you have room and a, and a good place to keep them that has plenty of light inside, you can dig them up and transplant them back into pots and keep them over winter inside they'll continue to produce for you. Now they'll take a little of uh, help from you, 
with keeping them pollinated, if you want the peppers to keep producing, you'll have to give the, the, the old stems a shake here and there to kind of get the, they're, I mean, they're self-pollinating plants, but they, they need some help. They need some, some wind action. So you're not gonna get that wind inside. So you need to shake them. But uh, I've had plants that I planted too early in the spring uh, and uh, you know, I would go through and kind of shake them a little bit every day. And by the time I transplanted them out in, into the raised beds in, in the springtime, I, some of them already had some decent sized peppers on them. And then they'll go through some transplant shock where the, they slow down and, and won't do a whole lot for a little while. Um, but then they'll, they'll pick back up again. So if you, do tra if you want to save some of your pepper plants and you've got a sunny spot inside or a well-lighted spot if you're using artificial lighting, um, if you carefully dig out around enough to get the whole root base and bring it up and, and give it some good nutrients and dirt in a big enough pot that can support those roots depending on how big your plan is, you can keep it over winter, bring it out, and then transplant it back out into your beds again next year. And in some cases, uh, you know, what, depending on, on how well it handles the transplant shock um, and, and what kind of conditions you have, sometimes you can have pepper plants that will go two, three years or more. You end up with like a pepper tree that will continue to produce for you. So something to keep in mind if you don't want to start them over every year. Unfortunately for me, our house is pretty dark all the time. Uh, it doesn't have really any good lighting uh, and the few lighting spots that we have are, are small. Um, plus most of my pepper plants are huge so they would take up a lot of room in there and for me it's just not worth it to try to, to do that. Even though I do use a lot of artificial lighting inside they're in, for smaller plants uh, in like many greenhouses and stuff for, for getting starts going. Um, so I don't do this and I always have so many pepper seeds every year that you know I save that uh, I have not felt the need to keep transplanting but you know someday if I you know if we get to a different place that is uh, more suited for um, larger growing plants indoors or when I get the greenhouse built maybe I'll do a test next winter uh, and transplant one in because I don't think this greenhouse is going to be done in time to test any of these although a couple of these ones on the on the end that are like six seven feet tall it would be awesome to see if i could save one of those and get it transplanted into the greenhouse into one of the big pots that i have um, so i don't know we'll see how fast the greenhouse build goes and um, see what happens but yeah it's just it's just been nice out here in the in the fall uh, with so much greenery and blossoms and flowers still coming on and, and you know, there are, you know, most of my tomatoes have all died off. I do have a couple of plants that are still producing. I actually picked a few tomatoes uh, just yesterday or the day before. Um, but the peppers are all still doing great. And I still got, you know, cilantro that's coming in awesome. Um, so little things here and there, some radishes, you know. Uh, it's, uh, it's nice. One thing I forgot to mention uh, in you know the, some of the previous videos is that you know back in uh, late August I had put the video the final video on our little vlog playlist from the uh, property in West Virginia that we had and I had talked about that you know we had decided to move on and sell it and um, kind of expand on our dream and, and go a different direction than uh, what we had originally planned with that. So it took us about a week and a half of, um, before we got up there again and, and finished collecting the rest of our stuff around the campers and, and whatnot. And, and uh, we were selling the campers with the property. Basically the, the campers just conveyed with the property. But finally we called the, the realtor and um, said, you know, we were pulling the trigger, go ahead and, and officially put it on the market. And he ended up putting the, the property on the market on a Monday, the next day. And on Wednesday, we got an offer, a cash offer, full price for the property. So in two days, it sold. And we accepted that offer. And like two and a half weeks later, we went to settlement and 
that was it. Like, it was so easy and so fast. Uh, we were very blessed to have it sell that fast um, so that we could get the money out of it and, and do stuff here. Like, we, uh, a week, week and a half from now, we're, we're having a whole new roof put on our house here and selling that property helped pay for that. So that's, uh, or did pay for that. So, you know, that was pretty awesome that it sold that fast. Peep, what are you, what are you so upset about? What are you so cackly about? So, uh, yeah, so the property's gone, the campers are gone. Um, we actually went up there the day after settlement, I think it was, and met with the new owner because we did, we actually did the settlement through the mail. Uh, so we didn't actually have to go and sit in an office and sign paperwork. We just filled it all out and it was all through email. Um, but we went up and met with the new owner. He was a younger guy and his wife, um, and, cause he had some questions on, uh, you know, stuff to do with the pop-up, like how, you know, how to set it up, how to take care of things and just things with the big travel trailer and how to use certain things on it. Um, so we kind of did a walk through the property with them and then like showed them all different things in the camper and, and uh, you know, different things that we experienced or what to look out for and all that kind of stuff. And it was kind of neat to, to hang out with him for a few hours, have a couple beers and, and meet the, the owner that's now going to be the next, uh, I don't know, leg of the journey for that property. And uh, I think that him and his family are really going to enjoy it and do some good things there. So we were very comfortable with with who's taking over the property from us. So, so yeah, things just keep changing and evolving and, and it's been a crazy year, but you know, things are going well uh, outside of the craziness of the world. They, on the little homestead here, they've been going well. What are you doing? Now you're gonna run away? He's so camera shy. So I guess my, uh, my fears were unfounded today with, with Merle. Um, we'll have to try it some more, going into the, the pen with him at the same time and see how he reacts. Uh, but today my, my fears were unfounded. So lessons, I guess, are face your fears because sometimes it might not be as bad as you think it's gonna be. Get yourself a good pair of rubber boots. Thanks for hanging out with me today, checking out the little vlog. Please subscribe to our channel if you get a chance. And I uh, hope everything is going well in your homesteads, gardens, and whatever projects it is that you are working on. Um, but that's it for today. Hope to see you again soon. Have a great day. Namaste.